Hey guys, and how's it going? Good morning, if it's morning for you. It is a Saturday. We've had some nice weather all week, and yard sale season is upon us. It is bright and early in the morning. I figured I'd turn the camera on. Let's do a little road trip, see what we can find, see if we can fill a truck on some bargains, and have a little fun time. And our first one looks like a good selection. Plus they got an old barn. And we got a rake and a bunch of light bulbs for four bucks total. Our next one's got a little bit of something. Train set for two bucks. Mm, I don't see anything automotive. Next one. We'll go check that one out. Nope. On to the next one. Had a nice guitar there. They want us to park out here. Does not look like they are ready to rock and roll though. Look at that, they're just selling the table. Rolling up on the next one. Let's go see what this one has to offer. Decent sized homes. I like old farm homes myself. It's for what I kind of look for. Let's go see if this is a drive-by or a good one. Can't tell from the street. We gotta walk up. That one was a dud. For me anyway. Thing is, in the morning, like right now it's 7.44, I think I started at like 7.20 or 20 minutes into this. The uh, first hour is where all the value is, where you're gonna go find stuff because it gets sold out pretty quick, you know, the decent stuff. Depends, I found stuff at the end of the sales too, but we got another one rolling right here. Let's go check this one out. Guy looks like a little bit of a motorhead. Might have something. Had some square body truck stuff. I do not own a square body Chevy truck, so nothing on that one. Yeah, so you don't want to dilly dally and hit sales that you, know, you can kind of tell it's like baby clothes and things if that's not what you're buying because nothing worse than going to the next yard sale and the guy's wheeling out a motorcycle that sold for 50 bucks <laughs> and you were three minutes too late because you were doing just that. In the beginning, I like to learn to hustle and kind of cruise by the ones that you know don't have much of a, a chance and hit the ones that have much more possibility looking from the street, you know? Got another, there's like two of them down here. There's one across the street too. And some neighborhoods you got to kind of watch out for too if they're like a really new neighborhood or like this one we're rolling into. This one looks like it's going to be a... Uh, apartment complex like an over 55 community there's not much power equipment uh, used guy stuff it's more like furniture and clothes that are in these yeah this is gonna be it, sometimes it's gonna surprise you though but a lot of times it's gonna be a dud i don't know how far back this goes Go back we're gonna go get back to the other side of the street where the more single-family homes with you know one to two acres are the ones that uh, have the old tractors mowers snow blowers that kind of thing we're out of here looks like we're rolling up in the next one and someone's loading stuff in their truck so <laughs> someone beat us to whatever he's getting already Either that or he's just unloading his setup that might be the case gotta take a quick peek by this one uh, he's he's unloading. Looks like a dud. Now you know that one is a bunch of kids stuff. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. <laughs> this direction might be another one of those like over 55 communities or townhome houses. Not sure yet. Yeah, he's all all like five, ten year old homes. So 
generally you find like the chandeliers that they took down that uh, was built out of spec home and that kind of thing three yard sales on evergreen this is evergreen check out evergreen yeah Snowshoes. One of my comments there's going to be a people saying, Why don't you stop at that one? Because <laughs> that's something that they wanted, <laughs> not me. Sorry about the dirty windshield. Not what we're looking for. Good morning. Nope, all women stuff. See a guy putting stuff out. <laughs> yeah, we've got some guy stuff here. There's a rototiller. A little barrel. This one looks like one we're going to go check out. And we got you know, seven quarts of oil, seven, eight quarts of oil for a dollar for all of them. We got uh, a bunch of vice grips. They're three for two bucks. So I got six of those. Bodywork hammers, nice ones. The three of them for ten. And then a bunch of rivet sets with a rivet gun. That was, all that was five bucks. Our next one. Try to find a parking spot. Mm, this one's iffy. Might have some stuff in the back. Let's go. Uh, gotta go check that one out. This one's got a dog and a rototiller. Two dogs for sale and a rototiller. Hi. You allowed to say hi? Hi. You're the shy. You're the shy one, right? She said it hasn't run in three years. Fifty bucks. Little Bronco or a tiller. Do a wheel around on that one, huh? So the last one where the tiller was, that was more of a uh, farm kind of house. She had a big tractor in the back and a big garden, and she got a, a tiller for the back of the tractor. And that one, she couldn't use it anymore. She said it didn't have a reverse, so she found it very hard to pull backwards. We got one on this street, usually where the cars are out in the road, or generally where they are. That machine's probably ah, 200 bucks, maybe 150, 200 bucks to clean it up, go through it. Your rototillers really don't get much time on them. There's not, uh, not like a mower, you know, where they run half hour a year. So even if they're 20 years old, they got like five, 10 hours on them. This looks like, I don't know, there's a big hose reel out there if that's for sale. That might be interesting. Nice house. Hose reel wasn't for sale. It lured me in. It was like a big fishing reel. It's like we're on a dead end here. Nope. Oh, we got one on. It's either that's directions to the one we were just at. And I just drove over. Bottle. That's not good. Some glass and art. Well. Hopefully I'm not changing a tire in about 15 minutes. This one on the right. Big garage. Yeah, it's iffy on that one. We'll go check it out though. Nope, dud. Those are cool machines. See more cars. sides of the road. Now everybody's starting to come out. It is 8.39 now. See golf cart. A lot of times they're not for sale. Generally they're just for moving the stuff around. Let's go check it out.
Next is our pressurized fuel tank for a boat. These end fittings alone are getting super hard to find. That was two bucks. I got motors for that. Three houses up from the last one. Looks like they are just setting up. Yeah, the neighbors though. That looks like a good older home. Let's go check this one out. Yard sale. It looks like a free pile and that truck's on that free pile. <laughs> Let's go check out. Uh, I don't see anything off the top of my head. Let's go see what's going on over here. Taking an old wooden trunk. It was all free. Let's go see if anything's left. Just a little too late. He just took a he just got a snowblower. Snowblower is gone, but I got a trunk. I don't know if it's faux old or it's old. Either way, kind of cool. Next one, it's got some wheels. Might be Toyota. Like a mix. No, this is gonna take a little finagling to get him in the truck. Ten bucks a piece. A couple old Columbias. Stuff's getting a little hard on the hard side to find nowadays. Yeah, let's get him in. Not even a challenge. Plenty of room left. Still got a hole right in the center there. There you go, Phil. And the back seat. I left them for the next guy or woman. I think it's a tractor. <laughs> Free sign on that. Get ourselves into the free pile. Get out of the center of the road. Thing on top is like a big speaker. Check that out. plug into the side of them. Come on, fingers. Yeah, they kind of tiny. Leaving for somebody else. And where you see cars. drive-by. I think that one's a drive-by. This one says barn sale. Drive on down. I'm in. Let's go. one's an explorable one. She's a little rough. Oh, yeah. Go see, this one's got a Buick for sale. Go check out the Buick. 
Well, that last one had a Buick for sale. I ended up 20 minutes into that one looking at it, but uh, just not the car for me. Going up here, let's go see what we got. I have done this. is a woman that does this one every year. Should be a bunch of knickknacks. Give it a quick eyeball, though. I guess we drive up. I can get into third gear in this driveway. All right, we're back at home base after a little shopping spree. We can get a better look at what we got. So the gas tank is for older outboards and is a pressurized tank. That's why it has twin, an inlet and an outlet for it. The engine causes pressure to feed. Uh, pressurize the tank and it feeds gas back to it. They get really hard to find and hard to find that are not rotted out. They're actually worth more than the outboards themselves because, you know, it's sitting with the fuel in it, so they already crap out before any, uh, the motor does. Bulbs, I have enough bulbs to last me the rest of my life. In the main shop that we normally film in, I run two strings of these around just for the lighting that is in there, gives it the right color. I know they're not efficient, but that's what I use them for. Train set for two bucks. I definitely feel it was worth what we got. He said it was sitting in his closet. He was doing a clean out and uh, it was his when it was a kid. So it's been sitting in his closet for probably 30 years. We should do a real, will it run on that? <laughs> Decent transformer. You use them for other things too. And what do we got for an engine? broken one. Is there a runner in here? Yeah, it looks like they're going to need some love. <laughs> oh well. So that's what we got. Again, it was two bucks. It's worth two bucks for... I have a stash. If or when I drop dead in my attic, there's a whole bunch of uh, slot cars and train set stuff. I grab them as I see them and then someday when I'm old and feeble, I'll take them all out set them up in my basement. <laughs> that was two bucks. Oil was a buck. Uh, air cool VWs. Use a uh, straight 30. I thought, I thought they were straight 30. Maybe it's a mix. Anyway, I guess I got 1030. For a buck, they're worth it. They'll go in future lawnmowers. Vice grips, they had a box of tools. It was, it was, uh, Three for two bucks. So I picked out the ones that said vice grips on them. You know, the real ones, not the knockoffs that they make now. Much better. They are going to stay here in my home garage because I am uh, without tools here. I'm a very slim location, uh, qu uh, quantity and quality of tools. Body hammers. These are nice. These are made in Germany. Okay, is that focusing on that or not? Three body hammers. They were, he was asking five bucks a piece. I said, how about three for 10? And he said, sure. So I grabbed the three of these. They just need a, bit, a little bit of cleaning up. But they're, they're probably about 40 bucks a piece, 40 or 50 bucks a piece now. Rivet set. It was five bucks for the rivet gun and all the rivets. And a box of these will probably cost you about 10 bucks alone. So that'll go into the stash at the shop for future use. If there's anything else in here that's any good. What's that? I don't know what that is. Like a pam or something. Then we get. I will get to the tiller in a minute. So we got the chest. The chest was free. I don't think it's old. I think it's just a um, make it look old kind of thing. But again, it was free. I think we're going to use it in a yard for a table. I'm going to flip it up on its side and uh, use that for a table. You know why they have a curve on top? Some of them. In the olden days, when they put them in a ship, you didn't want your trunk on the very bottom because all the stuff would get stacked on top of them and they get crushed so you had a curved top they would put the curved ones on the very top of the pile and they wouldn't get crushed on got kind of a cool look to it though even if it is a knockoff the bikes is uh both of them are columbia's made in usa that one's got a almost like a 10 speed rear end on it it's got the wrong rear wheel 
and the front one and they were heavier rims too like even if you look at this one you can see how thick the spokes are compared to a regular bike you know of course this is meant to hold 400 pounds so i had to go a little bit thicker you see the spokes are thinner on the back one here and then the trike the trike is really the front of it is just a regular bike you can see the whole thing where a regular wheel would attach right down in here and then this rear end bolts to it so you can actually take that rear end off and put that on another bike and that's probably what i'll do we'll see that's like i don't know if that's the original handlebars or not but my thought is to keep that rear end for another bike so for 10 bucks on each one of them i think that was a decent amount i'll probably sell at least that one clean it up get it so it's rideable and sell that one all right let's go check out the uh, rototiller hey let's see what this thing has to offer and the first is going to be the condition of the gas tank. That usually tells, yeah, it tells a good story. I wouldn't say it looks terrible. It doesn't smell great. At least it's got gas in it, though. You just want to try to go for a fire up, see if it'll just go. Let's go check the oil in it. Maybe we'll give her a shot. If not, we'll have to pull that carb off anyway. The float bolt. What's that thing? Yeah, we'll see if it'll run just the way it was. It's not going to hurt anything. I have a larger... I think it's called a... Not a pony. I, I forget what the name of it is. It's a Troy built larger tail than this. like a four horse big. Oil looks decent. But it's too big for our garden for the amount that it gets used it's actually you know for a garden that's 20 by 30 feet it's kind of ridiculous this is a better size all around i don't see any damage on the tines drag bar still on it that's good deflector plate still on it doesn't look like it's all beat up and have a bunch of hits on it all right see what we get we got a nest in there or is it just dirt What's your chances? I'm thinking it's not gonna go <laughs> without draining the fuel bowl. Let's uh, get set up. All right, full choke, full throttle. Let's see what happens. Make a guess. I'm gonna see it's not gonna go, but you never know. We'll give it like 10. <laughs> I already lost count. I, I don't think she's going. <laughs> Let's go watch. Crack open the float bowl and see what we get out of it. Got a new grass rats mug for home use. The only 10 mil I got is an open end. There we go. See what kind of puke comes out of here. Oh yeah, that's a good vintage, huh? <laughs> well, I want to run. She said three years. I want to say that's probably more like six. And generally that's how that stuff works. I don't think people do it on purpose. I just think they feel that uh, so much time goes by that uh, they don't realize it. <laughs> yeah. I think you got to drain all that fuel. Take that bowl right off of there. There's no fuel shut off. So... Yeah, that might be an issue. No water, though. Just bad gas. Let's get that drained out of there. We'll pop that float bowl off. See if there's any crap sitting in there. Might want that. <laughs> I don't have a magnet here, neither. Let's go take the needle and seat right out of it and let it pour through. There you go. That'll take a minute or two to drain that out. Let's go pop the air cleaner off, take a peek at how the filter looks.
It's actually pretty clean. A little bit of dirt sitting in the bottom, but not, not terrible. Need to be clean though, you can still see that crud. That always suck that up eventually. So you by the thumbprint here, it looks like we're meant to do something like that. Oh, no. It's got a Phillips on there, but I don't see any Phillips screws holding it. How were you held on? It looks like you're just supposed to pull right there. Oh. Taking too much. That's why. Not bad. We'll blow the pre-filter out. I'm not bad at all, especially for a rototill. You know, something that kicks up a bunch of dirt. We get that carb back on. We'll blow it out with air. Get a bunch of the crap off of down inside here. We use the air gun trick to fill a tire. If you don't have a, a tire chuck, see if it'll work for us. Get an air gun in there. You can kind of get it on an angle. And the air pressure will shoot the stem in. I have to get her up in the air a little bit. Just, I thought I had a tube. It doesn't. Were you impressed? I was. <laughs> I gotta figure out some way to get either a strap or something around that to expand it. I also gotta get it off, off the table. I might just take that tire right off. Pull a pin, but let's see if we can get the stem out of it. If you get the stem out, you can get a much more airflow going through. Let's go try that again. And once you get it seated, you can come back. As soon as you let go, it's gonna all piss out, but let's see what we get. It's rusted. Nope. Yeah, we're just not getting it on the back side there. I don't have any goop here to go help seal it up. I'm gonna take the air gun and blow some of the crap out. You need a little tire goop. Look at that. Try to get this spread out a little. I don't even have a ratchet strap here to put around it. Hold it up in there. There it goes. Got it. That wasn't so bad, now was it? If I could work quickly. <laughs> Before it all pisses out. There you go. Just gotta be careful. The tire pressures on these things are low. You're running like 5, 10 PSI. A lot of them don't have cords in them, so you wanna wanna blow it up. Look at the direction of the tread. That's the tire we just put on. This side's on backwards. Flip that one around. I think we're done with the gas draining. Put the float back on it. The main jet is right in the center. And that's where it sucks fuel up, so I'm just gonna give her a quick shot. Make sure that's clear without pulling it down. If we have a problem where it doesn't run, we can get into that, but right now I'm gonna leave it alone. Yeah, we'll put some gas in, it's a little closer to clear. Easy enough. Maybe what we'll do is we'll open that drain on the carb again. We'll let it flush through whatever's in the fuel line so we get some clear fuel. You yeah, see that yellow coming out of there? That should keep flowing. <laughs> Come on. I should be doing better than that.
The tank was pretty empty too. I'm gonna go pop off the uh, the going. I think I'm gonna go pop that float off one more time, blow out around the needle and seat a little bit, or maybe let it run with that apart, and then put it back together. The seal is on the needle. So there's no seal up inside there to blow out, to blow away. Oh, it's up on its side. Let's go flip that wheel around. It's a little wet around the axle there. A lot of times they're just a gearbox with grease in them. <laughs> gonna say you know why they had it on backwards because it couldn't get the clip on there you go now the valve stems on the harder side to get to but the treads match it on both sides now Do we get this time? I think the choke is still on. I don't know if we need the choke on. It's full throttle. We'll try it with the choke if we get. It might be the plug might be all gummed up from that crappy gas. Let's go try firing up the tines. Take the choke off. Pretty slow. Okay, it's pumping right along. There we go. Let's go pop that cover off where the belt is. Just give a quick look at that, see what the belt condition is, and we think we're good to go. That looks pretty good. I don't see you wearing that belt at all. I think they did make a reverse version of it. It would have another belt that went on to a separate setup down below. Yeah, operated different. But I'm not going to worry about that. It's light enough where it doesn't need much effort to back it up. Let's give her and pull on that spring like a snowblower. It all looks good. I'm getting the gearbox because a little greasy. I'm not going to be concerned about that. 
He's a day with a pressure washer though. Well, that worked out pretty good for 50 bucks, huh? No complaints on that. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna replace the other machine that I have, which is a, a large tiller. It's probably, yeah, it's probably worth between six and 800 bucks. So I'm gonna go kick that one to the curb and uh, downgrade us or downsize us to the one that's a little bit more to our, our liking or using size. We got one of those little uh, two-stroke ones too. The, uh, you don't even call them a tiller. I think you call them something the cultivator. So they're good for stuff that's already been busted up. If you're trying to like break up soil or grass that's never been broken up before, you need something that's got a little bit more snot. This will do it for us. It's probably worth about 150 bucks, 150, 200. I try to, if they're really clean like this one is where the paint's not all damaged, it's not banged up, half of new. So whatever new one sells for, you probably figure about half the cost is what people would pay for one. So I'm happy with it. Happy with all our purchases. There's other stuff I could have grabbed. I, I kind of, you know, that big tiller was kind of cool, but I just didn't feel like trying to huff it in my truck. There was nobody there for help. And the last thing I did was blow out my back. And I got a ton of that stuff. But we got some other goodies. I already put the tools away. We got the train set and the bike frames and all that kind of thing. So I hope you enjoyed it. Had a little bit of fun with me anyway. If not, then uh, I'll see you Sunday when we get back to doing our regular wrenching segment. Uh, this one we probably throw up on a Wednesday for a little midweek fun. <laughs> all right, guys, with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for hanging out with me, doing a little bit of uh, treasure hunting and uh, exploring. Even got a treasure chest out of it. Until the next one, I'll see you. thing there was another item that I bought that I didn't get to show yet well, that might be for another video there's a little precursor to what that might be see it soon <laughs>